so the team's off to a good start. Are you happy with where you're at right now? Yeah, things uh, um, obviously things quit uh, quit for us right from the start, and um, you know it's exciting. It's uh, it's nice just to be playing and and being out there and competing and uh, um, you know doing what I like to do. So certainly, um, you know, with with the Islanders, it's it's been tough sledding, and uh, you're uh, certainly one of the bright spots in the games that you've. Uh, I managed to get under your belt in two seasons with the Islanders, the only player uh, on a on the plus side of uh, the plus minus in those two seasons. What is it about your game that's allowed you to to put up numbers like that on a team that uh, has had its struggles? Well, um, yeah, you know, I think I think my biggest attribute is just my defensive style of play, and um, you know, I think I just want to come to the rink prepared day in and day out, and make sure that I can contribute on both ends of the ring, but first and foremost defensively. And, and I think that's uh, um, something I've worked on. And, you know, someone, uh, you know, once told me when I was younger that, you know, find something that no one else does as well and try to be the best at it. And, uh, um, you know, I think to really be an impact player at the National Hockey League, I think that's something you got to do. And um, obviously I'm still young. I'm, I'm still trying to learn, but I, but I think that's something that I've, that I've really taken to heart and, and try just to uh, impact my daily life and as well as my uh, my practice habits and the game habits. After playing for those uh, very young and uh, up and coming Islanders uh, the last couple of seasons, uh, is the transition was the transition difficult to step down to the AHL or with all the guys from the NHL, the young guns in there? Did you even notice a difference? Uh, it, it was a little bit different. Yeah, um, you know, obviously the style of play I think is, is a little bit more different. Um, uh, so it took me, I think, a couple games to really get adjusted to the speed of things down here and um, the style of play. But obviously, there's so many young, uh, young NHL players that are in the same situation that I've been in um, over the last couple of years now down in the American League. And I think the American League is obviously a very good league to begin with. And, and now with uh, all those top young players coming down, um, it just makes it that much more exciting. And I think obviously the attendance is up in the American League and. Um, a lot of good things are happening. I think um, sometimes the American League gets overlooked a little bit just because of the National Hockey League, but it's really the, the farm system for all the kids coming up, and the majority of players come through the AHL. So um, it's nice to have that uh, that onus and and the uh, the uh, you know the reputation that that the American League is going to start getting recognized a little bit more now. Travis Hamannick with us from the Bridgeport Sound Tigers. It's hockey this morning, NHL Network Radio on Sirius XM with Mike and Mick. Have you run into other NHLers on uh, on opposing teams so far? And if so, uh, does the uh, does, is, there, is there a little bit of trash talk that translates from the National Hockey League down to the A? <laughs> yeah, well, in in uh, good we'll fun, of course. Ice, but, uh... <laughs> Yeah, there's there's obviously uh, you know the way I play my game is, is hard nosed and um, you know I can be friends with a lot of guys off the ice, but when the game starts, it's it's serious and um, yeah, you know there's some guys that you run across that you that you've uh, battled with in the National Hockey League, and, and then you look over and they're going to be there uh, beside you standing there at uh, you know this weekend maybe. So um, you know those are those that's all part of the game. I think they understand it, I understand it, and uh, with that, it's it's a lot of fun because. Uh, um, that's something that I really try to bring to the table, and I think that's something that I, um, you know, I try to do a good job at. So for me, it's it's uh, it's another intangible, it's another part of the game that I enjoy doing, and um, you know I, I enjoy those one-on-one personal battles quite a bit. Now, in the last few weeks, we got the news that the Islanders are going to uh, make a move to Brooklyn in uh, a couple of seasons. Uh, is that something that uh, some of the guys have been talking about? Uh, because it could be a future destination for a lot of these guys, uh, and, and obviously you, yourself included. So what's the uh, scuttlebutt among players about uh, about the move? Well, I think guys are very excited. Um, obviously, the Barclays Center is a world-class building. Um you know, the Islanders are a world-class organization, and, um, you know, I think everyone's very excited. With saying that, uh, you know, Charles did everything he possibly could to keep the team on Long Island, and, and that just shows how much he really cares about, you know, our organization, our players, and our, and our fan base, and how much he tried to keep the team here. But, um, you know, we're just going uh, 20 miles or so down the road to, to Brooklyn, and it's going to be obviously very exciting times with this new rink. 
um, our up and coming young team, and I think we're all ready to make that step into the right direction and um, to be an elite team in the league. I think that's what we want, and obviously there's no better place to be doing it than in a uh, you know brand new rink. Um, it's going to be very exciting to be an Islander, and, and I'm very lucky. I'm very much looking forward to it. I think. Who, yeah, go ahead. Who are some of the influences on you early on in your career? I mean, you walk into. Uh, a dressing room there at the uh, Coliseum, and y- y- you walk out and you see the uh, the banners and the names of the past and the dynasty years. Um, so tell me about some of the guys that uh, that are there with uh, the current day Islanders that you sort of relied on and uh, sort of gravitated to as you made your debut in the NHL a couple of years ago. Yeah, you know when I when I first came, um, there was a lot of some of the older guys that were there, guys like Mark Eaton. Um, Obviously, those defensemen. Uh, Mark Strait wasn't playing at the time, but he helped me a lot. And, and I think last year, uh, the biggest influence that I've had so far in the National Hockey League was Steve Stales. Um, you know, the, the guy is a, is a class act on and off the ice. But I think, uh, you know, right from the start, him and I hit it off. Um, it was funny because I was closer to his son's age than I am his age. Uh, but obviously, that just shows that, that he's been around for a long time and knows the game on and off the ice. Um, like anyone else, and I think he really took a liking to me. Um, I think he really wanted to help me out in, in, in a lot of ways, and, and he, he really made my job a lot easier and um, really simplified a lot of things for me and on the ice quite a bit, but even more so just trying to learn the game off the ice because there's a process there to become a pro. And um, You know, he, he did more for me in one year than I think he'd ever realized. And, uh, you know, if you were to ask him, he would have just said that it was, it was his job, but um, you know, I know there's definitely moments where he went out of his way to help me out, and obviously it's going to be appreciated. Travis, uh, you're not playing the NHL right now. Uh, do you guys just keep in contact, uh, uh, the guys who are maybe playing in Europe or playing in the AHL, guys who are just cooling their heels right now? Do you guys just keep in contact just to you know, talk about what's going on, how the family's doing? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I was just talking to some of my teammates yesterday that are over in Europe, and um, obviously, the uh, you know you become pretty good friends with guys. So a lot of times when we're when we're talking and we're catching up, it's uh, um, you know there's obviously the hockey conversation, but after that, then it's just uh, you know personal conversation. And um, these are guys that you go to battle with, you become very close with, and and um, you know I don't think anyone can ever really understand a relationship amongst hockey players unless you really are um, a hockey player. So um, you know those those are uh, obviously conversations that I. I wish I was doing it in person right now and then knocked over the phone calling to Europe, but, um, you know, hopefully that can get settled.